Lord, as we enter into this time together, as we enter into this space together, may we be here with each other, setting aside the thousand things that keep us from being present with each other, recognizing that even in the oneness of being together, thousand things are still happening in our presence. Help us to cherish this time. Help us to cherish life. That we may learn and grow and be renewed as we worship together. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Psalm 31, 1 through 5. We can say together, amen. That fourth verse, the prayer of those lyrics seem especially poignant at this time. Kindle our hearts to burn with thy flame and stir us to build new worlds in thy name. Ah, as we are stirred to build those new worlds, let us hear these words. This passage from 1 Timothy chapter 6, reading today in the Common English Bible. Tell people who are rich at this time not to become egotistical and not to place their hope on their finances, which are uncertain. Instead, they need to hope in God, who richly provides everything for our enjoyment. Tell them to do good, to be rich in the good things they do, to be generous and to share with others. When they do these things, they will save a treasure for themselves that is a good foundation for the future. That way, they can take hold of what is truly life. We read also from Ecclesiastes 3, as best as able, clearing our head of a song and hearing these words freshly. There is a season for everything and a time for every matter under the heavens, a time for giving birth and a time for dying, a time for planting and a time for uprooting what was planted, a time for killing, a time for healing, a time for tearing down and a time for building up, a time for crying and a time for laughing, a time for mourning and a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones and a time to gather stones, a time for embracing, and a time for avoiding embraces. A time for searching, a time for losing. A time for keeping, a time for throwing away, a time for tearing, and a time for repairing. 
a time for keeping silent and a time for speaking, a time for loving, a time for hating, a time for war, and a time for peace. What do workers gain from all their hard work? I have observed the task that God has given human beings. God has made everything fitting in its time, but has also placed eternity in their hearts without enabling them to discover what God has done from beginning to end. So I, I know that there's nothing better for them but to enjoy themselves and do what's good while they li live. Moreover, this is the gift of God, that all people should eat, drink, and enjoy the results of their hard work. Speaking of hard work, who works harder than moms? And so we wish a happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. Uh, recognizing, of course, as we always do, the complexity of many of these holidays, a joy to some, a day of pain for others, and for many people, uh, both or somewhere between. And with gratitude to all of you uh, and to the Oakton Church of the Brethren for offering this video to celebrate the many places Mother's Day may find us and to honor you. Happy Mother's Day. This flower is for new mothers, tired, worn, yet strong and compassionate. This flower is for unconventional mothers. You are a gift, helping us redefine what it means to be a mother. This flower is for those who are like mothers. Your mentorship and compassion is shaping those you invest in. This flower is for those who have lost their mother and for mothers who have lost children. Know that we grieve with you. This flower is for women who ache so bad to be a mother. We see you and we know this day is difficult. We walk this path with you. This flower is for those who have a strained relationship with their mother or with their children. Today is hard. You are loved. This flower is for all mothers, traditional and unconventional, who share love, work hard, and make us who we are. These flowers are for all women, young and old, courageous and creative, playful and wise, loving and strong. Today, we celebrate you. You make the world a beautiful place. Happy Mother's Day. beautiful video. Thanks again to the Oakden Church of the Brethren for sharing that with us all today. Let us pray together. God of every time, the coming and going and embracing and refraining from embracing, who calls us to live and enjoy and cherish. We are prepared to hear from you. Our spirits, our hearts, our minds are open as we continue to worship God, move in our midst, and stir us to build new worlds in thy name. Amen. yourself to sleep you're gonna soak the pillow for many weeks you're gonna cry why why me but in spite of the ache it doesn't go away you'll be sharing story one rainy day and at the next table somebody catches your words here's the truth that he's never heard it takes it back to the marriage
she'd given up on And sit down to his daughter Who writes it into song You didn't know temptation when we're in pain um that that's just all you see you know i think it's the second verse there that even starts with for the moment all you can see that's how pain works and yet the song calls us deeper and to remember and wrap ourselves in the promise that there is not one painful thing happening there are in fact a thousand things happening tonight Oh, it's a beautiful song. It's no wonder that a woman named Bonnie Kate turned to this song in a time of hardship. A friend of hers, Max uh, Zogby, even reached out to the artist of the song, uh, Krista Wells, to tell her how meaningful that song had been to Bonnie and her whole family while Bonnie was recovering from uh, the physical and psychological wounds resulting from a gunshot. It, it was actually many gunshots. Bonnie Kate was one of the many people in a theater in July of 2012, nearly eight years ago now. A theater in Aurora, Colorado, at a midnight showing of the latest summer blockbuster. During the previews, a man walked in dressed as the villain of the movie and opened fire. Bonnie survived that evening. She was shot, but she was lucky she survived. And uh, she has been in physical and I'm sure emotional pain every day since she turned to the song that we heard for comfort. Oh, and uh, her friend, Max, mentioned in the story, they're married now. 
a second story from that theater, a story about a remarkable young woman named Jessica Redfield. I'm going to read the experience in her own words, this from her blog. I can't get this odd feeling out of my chest. This empty, almost sickening feeling won't go away. I noticed this feeling just seconds before someone opened fire, an odd feeling which led me to go outside and unknowingly out of harm's way. It's hard for me to wrap my mind around how a weird feeling saved me from being in the middle of a deadly shooting. I was in that theater in Aurora, Colorado, when suddenly I felt funny. It wasn't the kind of funny you feel after spending money you know you shouldn't have spent. It was almost a panicky feeling that left my chest like something was missing. A feeling that was overwhelming enough to lead me outside, to head outside in the rain even to get fresh air. I remember looking at my cell phone when I left. I was outside approximately three minutes before the gunmen entered the theater. I saw a map of the shooting later. He started firing right where I was sitting. Had I not gone outside, I would have been in the middle of the gunfire. The blog and Jessica continues from there to describe the outflowing of patrons from the theater and the sequence of events that took place outside. Police showing up and pushing people back away from the building. Whispers about uh, what was happening inside amongst the now displaced patrons outside and eventually stretchers. And bleeding people on them. She concludes at the end of this blog, quote, I was shown how fragile life was. I saw the terror on bystanders' faces. I saw the victims of a senseless crime. I saw lives change. I was reminded that we don't know when or where our time on earth will end, when or where we will breathe our last breath. For some people, it was the middle of a crowded theater just after midnight while Batman played on a screen. I say all the time that every moment we have to live our life is a blessing. So often I have found myself, though, taking it for granted. Every hug from a family member, every laugh we share with friends, even the time of solitude are all blessings. Every second of every day is a gift. We understand and know better than ever how blessed I am for each second I am given. Those beautiful words. It's now almost randomly or more likely divinely, she finds herself running out of a theater a mere seconds before a lone gunman enters it. She may feel like she has a new lease on life, but that feeling aside, it's, it's a tragic event that served to remind her about the preciousness of life. I think tragic events have a way of doing that in lives. But why do we wait for those tragedies to strike, to remind us, to cherish every second of every day and what we have every day? We are experiencing a collective tragedy now in this global pandemic, a time when typically tragedies may move us to be more present with our loved ones in this time. I have found, to confess this, that I have found some internal pull even against that. It's like I am sometimes uh, simultaneously drawn towards more and less presence. Maybe some of you can relate. It's not easy to cherish life and be thankful for each moment and each person, but like many things in our lives that aren't easy, 
It's worth trying to do anyways. It's worth fighting for anyways. As the scriptures have reminded us and called for us today to move into the deep, to invest in the things which last and set up for the future, not uh, earthly riches, but relationship, divine seeds that we plant, investing into others, being generous with our time, being generous with our finances uh, as others have need. We are called to store up riches in the kingdom of heaven. We are called to recognize the times of apartness and the times of togetherness, the time for solitude and the time of presence, the time of mourning and the time of celebration. Friends, I have a confession. I did the thing we're not supposed to do in life, let alone while preaching, but for the sake of good storytelling, I told a lie. <laughs> See, this, it's actually not a story about two women who survived the shooting in that theater in Aurora, Colorado. This is a story about one woman who survived and another who did not. Jessica Redfield did indeed write those words about leaving that theater before the shooting started, except that she didn't. Jessica Redfield died that night in that theater. Those words are hers. But miraculously, somehow, they, they were written, this is crazy, they were written about a month and a half prior, about an entirely separate and equally random and tragic circumstance involving a different lone gunman entering a food court in Ontario. Jessica was in this food court in Ontario in early June, just a few weeks prior to being in that theater, uh, when, just like I read for you earlier, I only rewrote enough to change the location. Um, she did feel panicky. She did run out of the food court. She probably missed the gunman by less than a minute. She was sitting exactly where he began firing. She did write that blog. It is still up today, describing her thoughts and feelings over such a tragic event. And a mere six weeks later, rather than being in a food court in Ontario where one person died and seven more were injured, she found herself in a crowded theater when a troubled person claimed the lives of a dozen, injuring 70 more, including Bonnie. Jessica was one of the 12 people that died that night. She was an aspiring sports journalist. If you visit her blog today, you will see uh, right there at the top, the blog I read for you earlier, this entry about cherishing life, cherishing each and every second because they are all gifts. We don't know how long we have, friends. An hour, a day, a month, a decade, longer, less. So why not cherish it? Why not live our best with those we love the most? The life that God calls us to. I want to close by reading those words from Jessica Redfield again. Um, reading them for us will be a different Jessica, someone who was also a former aspiring sports journalist, formerly aspiring because she now works for NBC Sports. Reading those words from Jessica Redfield, this is Jessica Kleinschmidt. 
I say all the time that every moment we have to live our life is a blessing. So often I find myself taking it for granted. Every hug from a family member, every laugh we share with friends, even the times of solitude are all blessings. Every second of every day is a gift. I now truly understand how blessed I am for each second I am given. In case you're wondering how I knew some of the stories I shared today, uh, I used to dabble in fantasy football analysis and writing and settled into a customer service job when I was a part-time pastor. So I ran in some similar circles as uh, Jessica Redfield did in social media and um, I didn't know her personally, but um, some friends of friends and, and the such. And so I ran across her story relatively early on in that process. As for Krista Wells, she's just a musician that I'm quite uh, partial to and fond of her music. I uh, received affirmative and enthusiastic even support uh, from her people for uh, streaming her music into our services in this time of social distancing. So I wanted to support her uh, on social media. She shared the story in the last couple of weeks of uh, Bonnie and Max. And it really touched me and I knew I could weave these two stories together. Um, it's so touching. Uh, Krista was so touched that this music meant so much to these people. Um, she was inspired to write another song. I think the song might be interpreted a bit as um, a love song to Bonnie, but perhaps more generally to anyone going through a hard time. If we're wondering what it all means, if we'll get through the day, here is a love song to all of us. It's been a pleasure to worship with all of you today. Uh, we can consider this the benediction. May God be with all of us. Amen.
I say all the time that every moment we have to live, our life is a blessing. So often I have found myself taking it for granted. Every hug from a family member, every laugh we share with friends, even the times of solitude are blessings. Every second of every day is a gift. I understand and know better than ever how blessed I am for each second I am given.